Perk. Well, happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back. Michael Lafito here. This is our 25th. We have a anniversary, our 25th episode. And uh, really, we, we launched this on April 10th uh, due to COVID-19. And we're getting different perspectives from thought leaders, uh, from uh, you know corporate to brokerage to you know rock star agents. And uh, looking forward to today's guest. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Next week's going to be a little bit different because uh, we're going on vacation. So we're going to take a two-week uh, hiatus until uh, Friday the, the 26th, I believe, is where we're going to do our next live Luxury Lunch and Learn after next week. Uh, but this is our 25th episode. So uh, Monica and I, uh, we met each other, I think, through Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate. is I think the first conference that we met each other. Does that sound accurate? That is correct, yes. Yeah, I think so. So if you're not familiar, luxuryrealestate.com or who's who in luxury real estate, great organization. Check it out, whether you know, you're a brokerage uh, or a team leader or an individual agent. Uh, they offer some amazing exposure internationally and great connections. So uh, they have a couple conferences a year. One was supposed to be in May, but due to COVID-19, it's uh, pushed back till the fall. But looking forward to that. So Monica, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and uh, where you're based and, and how long you've been an agent uh, before we get into today's uh, uh, episode. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me today and happy anniversary on your 25th episode. Um, my, my name is Monica Monson and I've been in real estate in Arizona in primarily the Scottsdale Paradise Valley market for over 18 years. Um, I recently, about a month ago actually uh, today, opened up a new brokerage called The Noble Agency. So my specialty has been in the luxury space for quite a long time. I've certainly uh, worked in all price ranges and lifestyles, including on the investment side. And, um, you know, things are good. That's awesome. So in the middle of a pandemic, you you decided to say, hey, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to move forward with this. So I'm sure there was some planning involved. You don't necessarily have to go into how long you were thinking about doing that, but, but you still hit the, the green light button during all this, huh? I did. I did. You know, I have had this dream to kind of do it my way. I started in a completely different industry in marketing and public relations and, and Marcom. And um, when I came into the real estate business, I, I really fell in love with it. And I just, I've always had this dream, especially the last maybe six years or so of launching my own brand with my own vision. And I've historically had the pleasure of working with some of the very best luxury brands in the world. And um, I couldn't shake the bug. And so, you know, I was getting prepared and um, the COVID situation happened. And to be honest, it sort of just expedited everything. It made really? it happen faster and I took the leap of faith. And so here we are trying awesome. to get everything uh, up and going. That's awesome. Well, congratulations. You got a great backdrop, by the way. Um, Thank you. Oh, yeah. thanks. I'm at my home office today. <laughs> We're still under construction. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so, you know, again, when I reached out to you, I was, I was really intrigued by the topic that uh, both you and I led kind of roundtable discussions, if you will, at Luxury Connect uh, this past fall. And uh, yours struck a chord because, you know, real estate agents in particular, entrepreneurs, right? We're pulled in so many directions. There's a lot of shiny objects. So talk to me a little bit about the, the you know, what you talked about or the title, if you will, um, if sure. you will, on uh, your roundtable discussion. And then we'll kind of go into, you know, some tips and suggestions uh, to anybody that's watching this, whether you're in real estate or not. Uh, we get a lot of views, we stream to various groups, and uh, we get a lot of people that watch the replays of these. Wonderful. Well, everything that I think I'll be talking about here is applicable to any business. Um, certainly in real estate, I feel like we we're in a business that's very demanding from a 24 seven perspective. You know, we really don't have set hours, we're on call. Um, and the biggest thing that we try to accomplish is how do we gain more time? So right. more time to spend with our families, more time mm -hmm. to, you know, put toward our business um, and just to have more quality in that. And so uh, the topic that we had talked about at that specific round table um, was really about, um, time and content planning and, and managing that um, and what you need to do to make that happen. Um, you know, with social media being such a popular way to communicate and, and with a variety of platforms, we can get our messaging out there much quicker, but it's also, there's a lot of noise out there. 
So, you know, for us as individuals, uh, whether we're an individual agent or working on a team or running a brokerage, we have to figure out how we can sort of keep up with um, putting our messages out there and providing value to our clients and our sphere and, and all of our partners, but also not sit in front of the computer or on our cell phone for 24 seven. So how yeah. do we accomplish that? Yeah, that's it. So that, that point is very good, right? So there's over 1.4 million real estate agents out there. And so you're talking about content. I teach agents all the time, the best way to attract opportunities and position yourself and differentiate yourself from the other agents is through amazing content and education so that the consumer realizes, man, this agent knows what they're talking about. They know the local market. They know trends. They know do's and don'ts and that sort of thing. And there's a lot of recycled content out there. In other words, very generic. You know, you see it all the time with, uh, you know, the... Uh, the fall, you know, the, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the time when they move the time forward back. Yeah, and there's, you know, there is, and there's a there's a place for reposting and and utilizing sure. content as well. But um, you know, it has to be, it has to fit within your plan. And and you know, my my initial suggestion to anyone really that wants to engage in social media, and I know we're all guilty of, you know, sometimes we'll be really active, and then you know, you kind of fall off because you get busier. Um, but I'm really trying to implement it for myself and my team is, you know, to stay consistent and, you know, first and foremost is developing, um, your brand and who are, who are you, you know, what do you want people to know about you? Um, people have different opinions on, should I have a personal profile on my social media? Like in Instagram, for example, mm -hmm. should I just have a business one? How do we blend the two? Cause once you get multiple accounts, it's harder to manage. So um, some of the things that, you know, we recommend is deciding on what platform really works for you and where you feel comfortable and then, you know, work toward mastering that. So if that's Instagram, then, you know, figure out how, what do I want to share? How am I going to um, apply what I do, but also let people who don't know me get to know me virtually because in our business, we have our relationships that we physically have when we see people we know and our sphere of influence and all of those, but we also have virtual relationships and people contact us from all over the world and need assistance with one of the largest purchases that they're ever going to have in their life, whether it be, you know, primary or secondary home. Uh -huh. But we have to build that relationship without physically being in the same space. Uh -huh. And that can be tough sometimes. So, you know, for example, with my personal page, um, well, let me step back for one second. I do want to say that it's about social media as well. Yeah. I think we all get caught up um, in looking at how many followers people have, how many followers you have on Facebook or friends, how many followers you have on Instagram. And my true belief in that in a lot of my social media go-to people is it's really about quality versus quantity. Um, I can have 2,000 really powerful followers on one platform and someone else can have 20,000, but if they're not getting the results that they want from what they're trying to accomplish, it doesn't make any sense anyway. So, so just keep that in mind as we talk today. No, that, that's, that's a great point. And I tell that to sellers. So in our market, you know, your market might be different, but in every, in every market, there's a price point where the shift occurs from maybe a buyer's, excuse me, a seller's market to a neutral market to a, a buyer's market. And in a buyer's market, you're not going to get as many showings. So I always tell our clients, listen, in your price point, like I have a $5.4 million listing and uh, we made it live last week and we have our fourth showing in a week, which is, I'm amazed yeah. usually in that price point, you make four showings in a year sometimes. So in Chicago land. So, but I tell them it's going to be quality of showings versus quantity. I'd rather have three quality qualified buyers that are motivated to buy versus 13 that are unmotivated. No, it's absolutely true. And, you know, engagement of course, and people sending messages and, and asking questions, mm -hmm. uh, Yes. It, it really makes a big difference. So I, I just don't want anyone to get discouraged by, you know, thinking, oh, I'm newer at it. Oh, I don't have very many followers yet. Um, keep at it. Keep your message consistent. And that will help you build the quality followers that you really want to attract Good. from that Good. perspective. Great advice.
Yeah. So, but on a, on a content basis, again, you know, depending on if you're individual with a team, you know, some teams have content managers. It makes it a lot easier for certain um, aspects and for posting more. Yeah. So like what advice do you have as far as, you know, content, like some people aren't the most yeah. creative or they're sitting there saying, man, what can I post today? And, and, and so it's not just a, a, a pray and spray. It's just not just random, but maybe there's, there's some uh, organization uh, to their content. How, how, how do you, what do you recommend? Here's my recommendation is schedule out. I, I'm, I'm a fan of time blocking. If you can, I know it, it doesn't always work perfectly. Um, I know that firsthand, but if you can block out a time, even if it's once a week to sit down and actually make out your content plan, you could probably take one hour a month and put together a full month's worth of content yeah. if you just focus on it and do it. And, and really it can be as simple as this. Um, you know, there's a lot of free content calendars and I'm happy to find some to send, you know, to link to this later, if you'd like, sure, that would be helpful. Sure. Um, but, but you take this calendar and you look at it and say, okay, what, even think of a theme, what month are we in? You know, right now we're in June, it's summertime. Um, you know, what are some of the fun activities that are out there in the month of June where you live, or perhaps where, you know, the, the customer that you're trying to accomplish, client you're trying to attract is um, interested in. And then, write down little snippets. It doesn't have to be really long stories. Um, you know, you can do simple things. So, you know, here I live in, in Scottsdale and right now it's really hot out. So, you know, people are looking for ways to get a little reprieve from the heat. Um, so I might perhaps talk about um, heading up to Flagstaff, which is just north of us. And it's, it's a cooler area. There are a lot of things to do there. I can post, you know, on different days about Flagstaff or perhaps Sedona, Arizona. Um, you know, a lot of our owners here tend to go to, you know, California or other locations. Um, think about what your audience might be interested in and post and, and schedule that on different days. So again, each day could have one little topic. I really do believe it's more impactful if you can post, you know, at least once a day, do something, whether an Instagram story or um, a post that's, you know, again, relevant to some kind of content. Perhaps, you know, every week on a certain day, you have your market update so that your followers that are watching know, okay, on Tuesdays at 10, I can get a new market update on sure. my community. There's some consistency. Um, so There's consistency. Yeah, these are all great things. Um, and again, oh, and, and well, one suggestion as well that would help streamline this, and, and this is a dear friend of mine, so obviously it's not a paid plug or anything like that. Sure. And I will share some other people to follow, but um, Chelsea Pites is a mm -hmm. social media expert. You're probably familiar with Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. And she has a new book, and it's called What to Post. And it's, it's essentially a workbook style yeah. social media um, guide that you can go through. And she actually gives uh, over 280 different Jeez. topics that you can post. And it is, um, you know, certainly applicable to every industry, but it does have a little bit of a real estate twist to it. But I mean, talk about a Bible for yeah. Instagram posting and uh, social media content that would streamline, you know, anything that you might want to do. You can certainly sit down again, once a month, spend an hour, plan it out and then move forward. The other part of it as well is once you have that content plan, then you have to figure out, okay, how do I want to create that content? Is it a quick visual, maybe through a photograph? Uh, am I going to record, you know, a quick video where I'm talking about a certain topic? Or, you know, do we need to look at anything else that, that's applicable? Do I need to create a story graphic or a series of graphics? So once you have the plan, then again, time block a second amount of time to start putting that content together. You can actually pull from, you know, especially agents that list a lot of properties. Um, maybe you want to do something that's more topic related, like I want to talk about kitchens or kitchen trends, or I want to talk about pools because it's summer, um, or I maybe want to talk about these amazing backyards. We as listing agents have a lot of photography at our fingertips. Don't forget, go back into your inventory and look at photos and pull a little collection together. You don't have to create new ones. You don't have to send a photographer out and spend money. You just have to, you know, pull those together so you have that content for that specific week or topic. And it, it, there's a lot at our fingertips that can really streamline time. So that, and I believe no, that's, that, that's very helpful. Um, yeah. 
so you were talking about it gets really hot there, and you use I think uh, I think you used uh, Flagstaff and was it maybe Sonoma? What? Sedona, Sedona, um, Sedona, right? Arizona. Sedona, Flagstaff. Um, how far up geographically from your market is is that approximate? So Flagstaff is about two hours north, okay. and okay. you go from you know desert here if it's 115 it's and up elevation. there it's about 20 degrees cooler. So. Sure. It's a nice local break for people yeah. that don't necessarily want to fly out of town. So, so for someone like you uh, or real estate agents out there thinking, uh, that, that might be just like a little de quick destination getaway. Uh, having a relationship with top agents in Flagstaff, okay, and some of these, maybe if, if you choose, Monica, and your teammates not to service those areas, having good relationships, because you might even be able to, you know, interview in, in a Zoom or something like this, one of those top agents for, because they know their local market, what's hot, what's not, maybe some hidden restaurants or gems that maybe you won't find. And, and that could be even just good content. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm a big fan. I, I'm still playing around with the interviewing and the live feeds on everything, but I, I interviewed. You're doing a good job today, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> but I did, you know, it's really easy to do this and you can interview, interview an agent in that market and, yeah. and talk about what's hot. You can interview, um, you know, maybe perhaps a title partner or, or a lender even in that same market. Oh. There's a lot, or even one of the golf club managers, um, sure. you know, in Flagstaff, there's a, quite a few golf courses. So sure. there are always ways to pull in content. Yeah. But I think we get so scattered because everything's coming at us so quickly that it's hard to know. We get frozen. It's hard to yeah. know what to post, when to post. Yeah, it could be overwhelmed, right? Uh, so Absolutely. you mentioned be you know pick one or two social medias that you're comfortable with. You know, I tell agents, you know, I, I, I recommend three. You know, have three that you're comfortable with. You know, for me, it's it's, it's YouTube, it's it's Facebook, and and it's LinkedIn. And my fourth is probably Instagram, right? I could do better with Instagram, but uh, talk to me about optimization of profiles. Is that important? Like, in other words, if you have a LinkedIn, but you haven't updated it in a while. and uh, it, it is, it's very important. And, and, you know, I lean to the people that I follow for social media advice to keep up to date because um, my primary platform personally is Instagram. I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn. I think they're necessary. I'm on YouTube, um, but I do probably use Instagram the most from a, a visual perspective. And I do lean to those experts because the, the algorithms are changing constantly. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, to stay up to date, you know, I follow Chelsea, I follow, um, you probably know Katie Lance. Sure, uh, sure. And you probably know, I, I don't know if you know Jen's Trends or um, Jasmine Starr is also another social media okay. person. And so they're all really helpful because, and they all have their unique focus. Um, we can't possibly stay on top of servicing our clients and running our business and, you know, be social media experts. So, right. um, but when things change, like an Instagram, recently there was a change with your name and your account, um, not your, your, like my name is at Lux agent. And then I had my name, Monica Monson. And that was changing for a while. They said it's best to put keywords in there. But when you go into messaging and you're talking with someone, it would put the keyword and not your name. So they didn't know who they were talking with. So they've been changing a lot of details like that, that help optimize how people find you. Okay. And it's true on all the platforms. So just make sure that um, you are staying on top of, of that, especially in Instagram. Okay. I, I have to compliment you on your Instagram. Uh, what are they called? Your, your, your name, what, what are they called? Lux agent. What, what is that called? Your oh, Lux, that's name. my avatar. Yeah. My, yeah. Lux my agent. And by the way, it's not, you, I noticed you didn't do L-U-X, you did L-U-X-E, which happens to be uh, the, the, the short uh, version of our designation, Lux, right? L-U-X-E. Yes. So good job on that. Yeah, so you got that I, early. Uh, thank you. Must have you. got that early. I had, I had um, yes, another company, similar name to yours, uh -huh. um, that was just sort of a little side thing. But all of my, um, my names and everything, my Twitter handle, everything is Lux agent including my license plate, which I didn't buy. <laughs> Someone gave to me. Nice. But um, yeah, so that's been around for quite a while. That's that's great. That's I've great. Kept it. So um, a couple things, a great bullet points that you shared. I, I want to shift a little bit. So, uh, you know, we ask sometimes similar questions of guests and that sort of thing. But, you know, you just started your own 
your own brokerage, you know, in the middle of a pandemic. And so if you were uh, talking to an agent, maybe outside of the market, um, or maybe an agent that is newer and they're interviewing you and maybe they're interviewing somebody else, uh, what words of advice would you have um, about breaking into selling high-end and luxury homes? You know, I would have, um, I can't always go back when I get asked this question to a few core things that really were helpful for me. Okay. Um, I relocated to Arizona, so I wasn't born here. I didn't have a network here. Uh, I had to build my relationships from scratch, okay. my business from scratch. And the biggest thing that I feel like was um, instrumental in my development as a luxury agent were kind of three things. Um, first and foremost, I, I had a vision for who I wanted to be and, and what I wanted to accomplish in the luxury space um, as an agent and how I wanted to, you know, give back to, to my clients and community. And I wanted people to get to know me and what I could offer that was different than perhaps everyone else. But to do that, I had to focus on first and foremost, getting to know the other luxury agents in the community. Who were the top producers? What did they, how did they do their business? Um, I wanted them to get to know me so that we had some sort of relationship um, to start out the gate. And to do that, you know, you have to attend events, you have to, you know, pop into their open houses. Um, we have what we call, well, we had RMS tours at the time, realtor marketing tours. Um, and so I decided that I needed to get to know these agents there was a tour called Scottsdale Luxury Home Tour at the time, and I decided to get involved. And I thought, well, how can I show them who I am unless I get involved and volunteer and I participate so that I can build the relationships and the second item, learn the inventory. So I did. I got involved as a tour director so that I could learn the inventory of the market in the luxury space specifically. And I also... Um, ended up being the co-chair of that tour. And again, through that process of being out on tour every week and learning what homes were available, what, you know, what were the hot buttons in luxury? How were the luxury agents handling their businesses, carrying themselves, those observing, types of things? Learning, observing, observing. It just really, really helped and it really catapulted. So, and then yeah. my participation with the tour, they could see, okay, you know, we, we're getting to know Monica, we're getting to know the quality of work that she does. And so over time, as I was developing my business, it was great because they knew, they already had an expectation of if I bring a client to Monica, who's maybe newer in the luxury space at that time, I have a, I have a feeling of what to expect in that, that process. That's awesome. And so that's been really invaluable. Um, I, really, I really, really think that was critical because you have to know the market. You have to know the audience that you're trying to um, attract and I'm kind of a, probably like you, Michael, very much of a, of a nerd in that I, I research and um, everything luxury. I mean, from branding to purchasing, every, every aspect of, you know, who is that client? What are they looking for? What are their core values? And so we really have to understand who we're talking with. Um, and then I think too is just, you know, again, learning knowledge um, and really just being active mm -hmm. is gonna get the foothold. You know, newer agents, I think branding is everything. I see a lot of agents coming into real estate and you know, you're in a, if um, you're on, maybe you have a little more limited budget. I don't care if you have $10 to work with or you have an unlimited budget, make sure that you create a really nice looking brand that fits with the luxury um, side of the business and be consistent in what you do. Um, consistency is so important. Great, great advice. And if, if I were to wave a magic wand and ask you, hey, when everything settles and the, the market goes back to normal, when I say the market, not necessarily real estate, but just, you know, schools are open, businesses are open, you know, phase four, you know, is, is in full effect. Uh, those agents and teams and brokerages that will be most successful are those that have blank in common, if you were to fill in that blank. Yeah, so the number one thing is the, those that have continued to take action through all of it. Um, my fear for our community of agents is that 
hey, you know, COVID hit and we're forced to be home. So let's just take the time and just kick back and watch Netflix all day long and we'll wait for it to be over. And the people that have done that have just lost, you know, two to three months worth of time that they could have been continuing to nurture their clients, educate their clients, support the emotion that's going on, um, really staying in front of them. And there's a lot of great agents that have worked through the, the entire process. Um, it's a different time. You know, we have to be considerate of every opinion and um, situation. And it's, it's tough. It's not easy. And it's easy to get complacent. And we can't get complacent. So I really believe those, all of, all of the above agents, teams, and companies who were not complacent during this time are the ones that are going to persevere as we move forward. So just keep taking action. That's awesome. Um, well, a, a couple things. I want to check to see if anybody has any questions for us. And by the way, if you guys are getting some something from today and you got a question for Monica, please ask it. And if the question comes in after uh, this live, uh, we'll, we'll let you know and we'll shoot it over to you. Uh, same thing, uh, feel free to type in, but if you guys are liking something, please share it. Let us know uh, if you have a suggestion for a guest. Uh, we just released our 94th uh, episode of our of our uh, podcast uh, this week. So if you guys have any questions for me, real estate related or not, uh, shoot a message or shoot me an email, Michael at Marketing Lecture Group. I'm checking my assistant checks for a question, so give me a second as uh, I'm looking here. Um, all right. No, I'm not seeing anything right now. Monica, uh, let me ask you, if somebody wants more information, I, I think I, kudos to you uh, in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, change is never easy, right? I tell agents all the time, the, you know, the, the real magic happens when you step out of your comfort zone. Comfort zone over here, step out of it. You definitely step out of your comfort zone, uh, you know, during this time. Um, if someone wants to get in touch with you, they might have a referral in the Scottsdale area. What, what's the best way to find out more about you, Monica? Sure. They can either follow me on Instagram. It's at LuxAgent or search Monica Monson. Send me a DM. I'm happy to respond. If anyone has questions, needs help, you know, I'm here. I'm always open to collaborating and helping agents. And I, I am fortunate to be able to do that often on a national basis. So I love it. Um, or you can visit our website right now. We have a temporary website. Sure. It's uh, thenobleagency.com. My information is there as well. Um, our new site's coming soon, awesome. and uh, awesome. we can't wait to share it with you guys. I'm so proud of you. Good, good job uh, you. with what you're doing, and appreciate what you're doing for the industry, and um, thank you for your time, and I hope to see you sooner than later at a, at a conference. You too. I Hopefully, uh, we'll be at LRE, and everything I will I hope go so end. Too. Great job today, Monica. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. All right, have care. a great Friday. Great weekend, everybody. Um, Monday, we're trying to get... Uh, guest. We have a void in our luxury lunch and learn on Monday, so stay tuned. Uh, Wednesday, uh, we, 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 we're, we're good. And then next Friday, the, 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 the Lafitos, the Griswolds, we're, we're going up to the Badlands, to Yellowstone, doing all that. So we're going to take a pause on the luxury lunch and learns for a few weeks, but uh, we do have next week. Today was our 25th episode. Thank you again, Monica. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>